Spencer Schubert joins us now. Spencer Schubert is live at the Heartland Event Center with more. Spencer. Welcome back to our pregame show. Back in the Axtell Studios brought to you by Vieira Wireless leading up to kickoff between Nebraska and Ohio State. Welcome back to our one hour pregame show taking you up to the kickoff between Nebraska and Wisconsin. The schedule has not been very kind to the Cardinals of Donovan Trumbull. Yeah, back-to-back -back weeks against two of the best in C2, St. Cecilia and Carney Catholic. Donovan Trumbull does get a bit of reprieve with Thayer Central visiting the field just east of Highway 281. Let's take a look at how the Cardinals did and hopefully a win after a couple tough weeks. Lorenzo Williams for Donovan Trumbull. Cards a nice run early on for the guys in red. He dodges a couple tacklers before it takes about three guys just to slow him down. Cardinal still running. CJ Cosgrip tries to make something happen, but he is sacked by Jacob Neep of Thayer Central. And Thayer Central came to play in this ball game, tried to give the Cardinals another rough week. How about Tyler Van Cleef? He finds room down the sideline before he is pushed out and gets a little slippery there, but he gets back up. Neep now on offense, rumbling for 12 yards right up the gut. Got to shore that up for the guys in red to get ready for postseason play. And Tyler Van Cleef not to be denied. Check out this run. One, two, three, four, five tacklers had a shot at him. He rumbles into the end zone. Thayer Central takes the lead, seven to six. And look at the fans for Thayer Central out showing support. Is it Halloween? It might be Halloween. It's getting close. CJ Cosgrove, though, he responds, sneaks in for a touchdown to retake the lead. They take it at 12 to seven. At that point, they go on to win quite easily in the end. They win 36 to 15. The Tri-City Storm had pink ice as they hosted the Chicago Steel. Let's see how the Tri-City Storm fared in this one. There's the pink ice. Everybody wanted to know what it looked like, and it's quite pink. Soren Janssen breaks loose, but his shot is gloved by Matthias Dahlstrom, and Storm still on the offensive. Nick Lappin has a nice center pass right there. Storm cannot cash in on it. Little Dave and Jason Murphy from Murphy in the Morning from Hits 106 in attendance later. Now on the attack, Phoenix Copley. Puts the brick wall up against Chicago. Maybe a sign of the week. Why not a Saturday night rendition? Brad Shearhorn wrists one to the net. But Dahlstrom gloves it again. It was a scoreless game through period number one. But Tri-City, they go on to win by the final of two to nothing. A base hit followed by cheers. A simple sound of summer that is more than welcome for a town trying to dig out of some of its darkest days. I heard the sirens and the ambulances and sometimes you don't pay attention to it and sometimes it just hits you and this time it hit me and it just gave me a bad feeling. Just one month ago a fatal accident leading to the death of two basketball coaches put everything on hold including a Legion baseball season already three games in. No one really wanted to play for a while and then uh, we can't, we uh, we postponed a couple games, but you know, a week after it happened, we were playing, and the first couple games, you could still tell that the kids just weren't ready to be out there yet. After funeral services and time for the town of Broken Bow to heal, head coach Jerry Pomplin knew exactly what he had to do. They asked us if we wanted to continue the season, and um, I talked to the team. And uh, I think it was pretty unanimous that we all wanted to finish the season. Um, 
it was very hard to get back out on the field. And future opponents didn't take long to offer condolences. McCook, they gave us wristbands and team, the juniors, Cozad gave the juniors hats with 21 on it. It's nice for them to reach out to us. It's amazing. I mean, people we don't even know are just supporting us and it's, it's pretty awesome to see all the support that we get. Disregarding the difficulty, the team has shot out to an amazing 15 and three record already capturing their spot in the league championship game. And it's that good baseball that is healing not only a team, but an entire community. I feel that our hearts are strong and our motivation's very strong, and that's what's carrying us right now. Um, and, I, and I think we're gonna continue to get stronger as the, the season progresses, sir. The ping yeah, yeah, yeah. of a bat, truly bringing in more than just a base hit. Reporting in Kearney, Spencer Schubert, and TV Sports. As the Special Olympics brought many special memories for its Olympians from all over the country this past week. And that story is no different for a Special Olympians from right here in central Nebraska. Here's the story of two sisters from Grand Island who medaled in bocce, and that was the footnote to their week. <laughs> At the Special Olympics in Lincoln this week, the sport known as bocce brought two Grand Island sisters closer than they could have ever expected. Yes, it's exciting. We're all excited and everything. We did our best and I just love it. I'll bring it home to be happy. It was so much fun. I had a great time. The sisters were a part of a four-member team that fell just short of a gold medal in their division losing 16 to 10 in the championship game. Oh, it's a great experience. Uh, for the athletes, they all have a good time. Uh, we, we strive to do our best in competition, but we also want them to have fun. For coach Don Trevartan though, it wasn't about Nebraska's two bocce teams that took gold and silver in their respective divisions. It was the camaraderie he was able to experience with a wonderful group of Special Olympians. Very heartwarming. It's, we've, we've had a lot of fun with them. As for Mary and Jenny, who are now back in Grand Island with medals in hand, they both agree that bocce will become a family game. Or maybe take a nap or something like that. Or, yeah, I could play with my sisters. Um, we just tell each other to do our best and try our hardest, and we get me to come back, so. Again, it is Jared Crick just blowing through his block. Last season, Jared Crick was seen by many as star defensive tackle and Dominican Sue's right hand man. You know, having Sue there really helped me the most, just telling me, you know, giving me pointers, you know, on, on teams from last year and coming into this year, just what to expect. This year, though, the Cozad Nebraska native is in the spotlight, something even his father couldn't have predicted. It's exciting. I mean, I won't lie to you, but, you know, I'm just enjoying the experience at Nebraska. David and his wife Cindy raised Jared in Kozat, giving him a Western Nebraska lifestyle that they believe permeates through Jared still today. Oh, I think the smaller community, you know everybody. Uh, you learn how to be a good teammate. You just learn to be a good teammate. And bringing that Western Nebraska style to Lincoln makes Jared's hometown all the more proud. I think it's it's pretty big for a small town like this, and and I know a, a lot of people in Cozad and surrounding areas support him, and that's what they go to the game to see him and see the other Cozad connection too. The town may be quiet through the week, but come Saturday, it won't be hard to find somebody walking around wearing red. Well, we've known him ever since he's a kid too, and it's it's kind of a neat deal. You watch him grow up in high school and see how good he was in high school and, and watch what he's become in, at the university. It's, it's pretty unbelievable, yes. As Crick gets ready for Idaho on Saturday and Sunday, a potential NFL future. He promises his COZAD ties will always be held close. It's, it's great, you know, coming from COZAD, just having a, you know, a great upbringing. Um, I'm blessed, you know, to have the friends I had and to grow up in such a great place. And to me, I do feel a little responsible to represent it the right way, whether it be, you know, on the field or in the community, just whatever I can do to make, you know, shed some light on COZAD in a good way. You know, that's, I just go out there with that attitude.
When Nebraska's football schedule was released, everybody looked to see who Nebraska played first in the Big Ten, and it turned out to be the defending conference champion, Wisconsin. But that isn't phasing the Huskers as they prep for Saturday's showdown. And that's the topic of this week's Husker Blitz. <laughs> It's just the next game on the schedule for us. It's the first conference game, so um, first, what we're concentrating on is getting better as a football team. It's on what you have to do in tasks and just keep on moving forward and take play by play. I want to get caught up in all that. You know, we just want to worry about ourselves and you know focus during practice this week and you know just make sure we're doing the little things to help us win. I want you to step in between the lines. The all, all the fans and the hoopla surrounding the game, it all kinds of just goes away. We can do what we can do, control what we can do. Um, do all the little things right and the big things to take care of yourself. So um, just go on, just play in the basketball football and be consistent at all the good things. We have a really, really consistent approach around here. And the number one thing we have to do is take care of us. We need to, we need to, we need to get better. From the football field to the volleyball court where the Nebraska volleyball team's start to their first ever Big Ten conference schedule was far from easy and after sneaking past number five Penn State on Wednesday and 24th ranked Ohio State on Saturday, the Huskers are getting ready for their first ever Big Ten road tests of the year. They make the trip to Michigan to take on both Michigan State and Michigan in rapid succession this Friday and Saturday respectively. And for a coach that's already coached in this conference before, head man John Cook still finds excitement in hitting the road in the Big Ten yet again. I don't know. I'm, I'm curious to see. A lot of the venues for volleyball have changed or they've been remodeled. So I'm curious to see that because back when I was there, there was some pretty uh, dismal facilities that the, the volleyballs were playing in. Well, also tonight, more than 175 cross-country teams hit the grass of Kearney Country Club for the annual UNK High School Invite, and here are how those teams finished on top. We start with the boys, where the Class A winner is no surprise here as Kearney High, they take the crown. The next team to make a dent locally in Class A was North Platte, who finished 10th. The other top teams to round out the meet are Scotts Bluff in Class B, Columbus Scotus in Class C, and Grand Island Central Catholic there in Class D. On the girls' side of things, it's Millard West who is meet champion in Class A. Class B, that goes to Lincoln Pius X, and in Class C, the top prize goes to Sydney, while Lindsay Holy Family wraps up Class D. Local teams who did stand out consist of Kearney High with a second place finish in Class A, and in Class D, Bertrand Loomis had a good showing, finishing second overall, while North Platte, St. Pat's, Ravana, and Kearney Catholic help round out the top five finishers in Class D. And finally tonight, a family known for its boxing in the Tri-Cities received a phone call for another run at fighting on pay-per-view, and it took a little while, and by a little while, we mean no time at all for Kearney pro boxer Brandon Quintana to say yes. <laughs> Being a pro fighter in Kearney, Nebraska is no easy task. So when Brandon Quintana got a second call ever from Showtime, he knew he had to jump at the opportunity. I was excited, like ready to just give it another shot again. Last time boxing visited the Heartland, Quintana was asked to be an undercard to end Antonio DeMarco fight. This time around, the October 15th event is headlined by famed fighter Kimbo Slice. I would never thought he would have, you know, gave boxing a chance. I uh, watch him MMA and just some other videos of him. Uh, I want to meet the guy. You know, you, you see him on YouTube and seem, you know, he became popular from YouTube. So, I mean, if, if, ever, if anybody out there has, has got a dream to do something, they can do it. You know, anything can be done. But the second round of being in a Showtime event is the big story for the Quintanas who hope to strengthen their boxing family legacy. I think it's, I think it's a big deal. You know, it's, it's showing that, that uh, our name is getting out there. You know, the, the boxing from, not, not just from the Quintana family, but boxing in general in Nebraska is, is good. You know, we've got good boxers around here. Certainly an interesting story in the boxing world. That'll do it for sports. We'll be right back with a final look at your forecast.